Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I want to revisit something that I did more than two years ago. And um, about two years ago I created this uh, flowy Node-RED because uh, I was creating some um, uh, CSV files or with Node-RED and I just wanted to have like a very easy way to look at the files that are on the Node-RED server without logging in. And I created this file browser function or flow, which is actually this one, uh, which is still on the uh, on the server and it's still working. And um, it was working fine, but it had some quirks because uh, I was working with the UI template to generate the file list. And um, I think the UI template is great if you want, just want to dump some information and show in a table format. But as long as soon as you need to, you know, work with that data, it just becomes very awkward. So. Uh, I had to create all these drop down in order to change between folders or if I want to delete a file or graph it, then I needed to do, you know, some, uh, again, just drop downs and then put into different drop downs because this is how I could work with uh, the standard components that are available in dashboard. And I was pretty sure that there is a better way of doing that. And I started looking around uh, to find a more uh, interactive uh, list control and actually there are quite a few so i've used the ui table um, in the past but now i find something else which works a little bit better and this is this e ui e table um, uh, basically i was just looking for a like a table node which is uh, which has a version which is not like 0.0, .0 something. So it, 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 this one is like 4 point something. So it looks like that this is something that is being worked on. It is constantly being upgraded. So I think this, I thought this is a good basis to start. And um, that's how it looks like. And uh, essentially the function hasn't really changed, but I rebuilt the whole UI using this new component. So as you can see, it, it feels more like a, um, a Windows Explorer or generally file browser. So there are some icons, so you can better tell what's the whether it's a file or a folder. And of course, you can go into the folder, and then you know if you click in the folder, it refreshes. And then there are a, a certain file types that are recognized. So if it's an image, then it's going to show me the preview of the image. You can like you know as, uh, jump between pages. You can quickly uh, look up these images. You can navigate up and you are also, oops, no, I want to go up. And you can also look at um, text files as well. So you can just preview anything which is like CH, uh, sorry, a JSON or a CH file or a Python file or um, what else, text files. You can just view them here, uh, which works, I think, in most cases. If it's something small, and if it if it's a like, like a really big file, actually it's going to say you that the file file is too large for a preview because I managed to wreck the uh, the node red when I was trying to load. I think it was a five megabyte or a fifty megabyte text file into the do, uh, into the dashboard, most probably to run out of memory. But um, as you can see, it runs uh, quite snappy and. Uh, it, uh, it did retain all the functions that I had before. So you can see that I still have this refresh and reset buttons and up buttons. It shows the current folder here. You can turn on whether you want to see the hidden folders or uh, sorry, hidden files or not. And whenever you select something, you can just uh, click on this file. Uh, well, click on the file and it shows you the file name and the preview. And you can uh, switch to, uh, sorry, you can click to delete it. Uh, or you can also click on download then and it downloads it as a file. So you can download any file from the server, even if it's not you know, in, a, in a path or in a folder which is uh, available on a web server as a, like a static page. So it works fine. Uh, I just realized the only function which I haven't re-implemented is the graph function, but uh, mostly because uh, it was nice to look at the CSV, but I did not use that uh, too much anyway. So um, that's good. But I think there is a place for here to add a graph button. If I really want to, I can just squeeze this file name a little bit more, even though it gets truncated for longer files. I think if I go, I go there.
Eh, no, it still fits. But anyway, uh, that's how it works. And what I want to do in this video is I'm going to take you through the uh, flow if you want to understand the inner workings. And then towards the end of the video, there's going to be like a separate section. If you are not really interested in the inner workings, but you just want to copy the flow and then make it work for your uh, setup, then, you know, what are the different places where you want to, you know, check and maybe make some uh, minor modifications. So this is how the flow looks like. And um, in fact, it's fairly similar to the, the previous flow um, to in a lot of different ways. So in the in the middle of everything, there is this file. Um, this is the file lister node, which is uh, it's basically just going to run the uh, uh, directory listing. So I'm feeding all sorts of information into it, mostly like uh, which folder to select, whether to select hidden files or not. And this is all mostly controlled by these different buttons that you can see on the UI. So the refresh, the, the reset, the up, uh, there is also an initialization, uh, this one we are using for some feedback and uh, the change folder function as well always goes back as well just to refresh the file contents. And um, uh, whenever you are changing folders, then the, the folder description or this um, text gets updated. And then once the information leaves the file folder, then we just format the data and then we uh, feed it to this file browser. So this is the new component that uh, is uh, used uh, especially for this, uh, you know, that's the new UI table. And uh, let me just quickly go into that. So in this uh, new UI table, there is not an awful lot that you can define. Um, uh, basically, you have an options and a columns. And um, also, let's, let me mention that this is called... Um, I think it's something called eTable, yeah. So node red contrib UI eTable. And if I find it in the install, so as I said, it's like 4.6.3. And if I open this, I just want to show you that uh, this is based on a JavaScript project, which is called the tabulator.info, uh, which is, you know, especially designed to make uh, responsive uh, tables like this. So you can see that you can do a lot um, uh, I'm, I, I guess you can see that uh, from previously as well that you can do, you know, you can uh, pick on the column headers to change sorting and you have all sort of various options that whether you want to just display text, whether you want that to be formatted as a, as a progress bar or, you know, a couple of options uh, and also these fields are editable as well, which I'm not using in my flow but you can see that you can do ratings and you can icons and and um, there are a lot of uh, built-in formatters used as well and it supports uh, pagination by default and uh, yeah you can see that i use some of these functions so for example here is the uh, um, i prepared some icons here so this shows uh, you know icons for the files and uh, I have also have do formatting so it displays the date and time in the way I want it. The one thing I did configure and it's not working for some reason, I wanted to add thousand separators for the size as well, but I did the configuration, it just doesn't work. So maybe I need to work a little bit more on that. But going back to the, so if you want to learn more about this, there is a really good documentation so you can just uh, um, figure all this stuff out yourself. But what you do, what, the way you configure this um, uh, table is basically you have to send in an array which has objects. And of course the object values or the attributes are going to be the columns. And then you have two JSONs that you can specify for the e-table. One is the settings, so you can specify things like, you know, can you move the columns, can you resize the columns, um, and, you know, how many files you can select from the list or how many items, and the height, and, you know, you want to fit the columns or use auto resize, that sort of stuff. So I just picked some examples, I made some minor modifications to that. And the rest is the uh, column definition. And again, you uh, provide an array which uh, in each element of the array is going to be a specific column in the, um, in the, in the, uh, in the table. 
And the two basic fields that you are going to specify is what is the title and the field. And the title obviously becomes the column header title. And the field is the name of the attribute that is, is passed in the incoming message. So, for example, I'm passing the file name in a field F name. Uh, for example, for the column, sorry, for the type, this, is, this says type, um, I have a field which is an icon and it actually contains an HTML tag of the icon that is going to get displayed. So all I'm saying to, um, to the table that actually the field value is an HTML code. So just insert that into the, into the page HTML. And I also specified some width. And for the size, as I said, I said it's a number and the thousand separator is comma and the decimal separator is dot. But that's the, that's the bit which is not working. I'm, I'm not really sure why is it not taking that into account. And I also have a couple of fields. I have uh, uh, the created and the changed date fields. And as you can see, I'm actually the, the object that I'm passing in an array is not like a simple object, but it has, you know, one of the attribute is an object itself. So I can just use normal JavaScript notation to reference to an attribute of an object inside the array. So that works as well. And for this, I specify that it's a date time and, uh, and this is the way I want my date to look like on the screen. So obviously you can change that to your local format. So setting this up is actually fairly simple. It takes a lot more time to um, uh, research all these four matters, but you can just go here and so if I look for, you know, cell formatters, then you can have all the documentation here. What are the different versions that are available? And again, there are some icons and, and examples shown here as well. And then for each of them, there is, uh, there is always some example how you look at how you do it. So this is the HTML format and that's what I used as well. And besides that, it works like a UI template. So obviously you assign it to a group and uh, yeah it and i specified a fixed size here and it just renders, renders the table and everything that uh, that goes along with it so what i did in the prep data is uh, i was just doing a lot of uh, you know prepping uh, there is some old code here from the older example that i'm not using anymore but uh, as you can see once the the data comes out of the file lister I do a lot of replacements, so from the full path, I generate the file name only. I create a, um, uh, I, this, is this is where I create all the different icons that are getting displayed. Uh, as you can see, these, these are just um, font awesome icons. So there's like a text file, an image file, a code, and a generic file icon, and a folder icon. I also separate the extension into a separate field, you can see here. and um, I'm also generating a download link, which uh, is actually something that goes behind this download button. So this is all getting uh, generated in the uh, um, in the beginning, and then I just pass all this information, this big array, which has everything about all the files uh, into the file lister node, and it just picks out all the the only the fields that I uh, specified in the column. Whatever you select in a file just comes out, sorry, whatever you select from the table just comes out from on the output node. So you know exactly what you clicked on. And it's not a, like an ID or anything like, but the full object comes out. So uh, I just pipe everything into the table and I, you know, whenever I get, anything gets selected, I get the name, the extension, the size, basically anything that goes in, where it gone in. So once something gets selected, I select the file name and um, I created this big uh, selection where I want to deal with the preview option. So here I listed based on the payload ext or the extension. So these are all the extensions that I want to support. And, um, and basically what I do is I, I get the file name, which is the the full file name with a path, I put it into the message.file name because that's what the file read option expects. This is where I'm checking the size as well. So if I'm 
like if for tax files, if I'm below 200K, I would allow that file to be previewed. Otherwise, it would I would just display a message that the um, uh, you know the file is just too large for preview. But other than that, I read the file and I format the file into a just a simple div HTML. I try to encode all the special characters uh, for to the correct HTML codes. And I also replace all the line feeds to just BR, so it gets uh, displayed as a you know proper line feed or new line character in the HTML. And I just put it into a file preview. And this is just a UI, box standard UI template. Um, and it just displays the HTML code. And for image, it is almost the same. So again, I get the file name of the image. I check the file file size. If it's below two two megabytes. I think two megabytes. I say, okay, let's read the file. I convert it to base64 and I pass the base64 um, version of the image as an inline image source in the HTML. So that was the only way for me to ensure that I can display any, any images even if they are outside the, um, you know, the node -rest static folder. So as you can see, it gets uh, the source is the base64 version of the image. And it seems to work for, you know, JPEGs, PNGs, that works fine. Haven't tested with GIF, to be honest. And um, yeah, I also limited the size to um, with 200%, so it gets resized based on the screen space available here. So that's... Uh, this is all the preview functionality. And then on the top, yeah, I explained all the other bits and pieces. So, and this is all the, uh, that's the delete and the download functionality. And uh, the delete, uh, to be honest, I just borrowed the same logic from the previous flow. Um, so I get the file name, I uh, show a confirmation message, you know, I should want to delete it. And if the, uh, if you select yes, I pass the file name into, again, a file write node, which is set to action delete the file. And then it deletes the file, and then I send a trigger back in order to ref refresh the screen. So you will see that the, the file has uh, been removed from the folder. And if you want to do a download, then um, <laughs> that was the trickiest part, to be honest, because what I needed to do is I needed to create this uh, link. Well, basically just a piece of JavaScript code. Uh, you can see that it's between script and end script and it's a window open and it calls the download link uh, in a blank page. And actually that download link is something that I have borrowed from the previous version of the flow. So it is up here and it just creates a slash download uh, uh, HTTP endpoint. And then I again, I get the file name. And back then I managed to figure out that if you are passing the, you create this header content disposition to content disposition. What is that? I think that's the, yeah, it's like an attachment something and I spe you specify the file name, that's how the browser knows that the response is uh, is a file that needs to be downloaded instead of a file that needs to be displayed. And that this is why you're getting the, you know, in Chrome, the notification down here that the file is uh, downloaded. So actually I'm going to copy this one down there uh, with a new flow. And um, that's pretty much it. So it's not that complicated and most of the the hard work is actually done by the UI table or the e-table. And this is why I don't have so much of the previous uh, gibberish that I had to do to, to handle, you know, what you have selected from the, from the drop downs and also probably the drop down because while well, everything is on the table and, and in the list, and then when you click on the list, I just get the, uh, you know, what you have clicked on and I can decide whether that's a folder. So I want to change that folder or if it's a file name, so I should send into a preview or uh, whether I should update the, um, you know, the delete or the download button. 
So yeah, it's very simple. And I also borrowed this uh, option here from the top where you, here in this inject node, you specify your base folder. So again, if you are using um, Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi, then that would be slash home slash Pi. And that's it. So that was the more complicated explanation. So now let me just talk you through how you want to use this flow if you are downloading it from, uh, from the link, which is going to be in the video description. Actually, I said that I'm going to move this down. So just let me do that quickly. Okay, so good. So that's the that's the piece of code that you would be able to, so this section is the one that you would be able to import when you go to the link in the video description. Okay, so what, what you need to do first is, uh, well, first you come to this default folder and then you just make sure that this is pointing to, the, to your default folder. So as I said, if you're using Raspberry Pi, then um, your Pi user is going to be Pi, so that would be slash home slash Pi. If you're using something else, obviously just uh, update accordingly. Mm, you might, I mean, if you want to use this especially just to look at a single folder, so you don't want the user uh, to have access to other folders or, you know, um, move up and down in the hierarchy, what you can do is you can remove the up uh, uh, button and what you can also do if you come to this file list is you can uh, pick that it only selects files. So it's not going to show the folders. Uh, so the, the user won't be able to go into the folder. Or if you still want to display the folder, but you don't want the user to go into the folder, then you can delete either this link or this link as well, because this that changes the folder. And actually I realized that I have run a little bit ahead of myself because I did not talk about the two extra nodes that are required for this whole flow. Obviously you need a dashboard and you need the standard nodes, but you also need the list. So node red contrib fs. So this is the file lister node, which that's the middle node. And uh, the other one is the node red contrib UI e table. And there are a lot of e tables, so just make sure that you're selecting the node red contrib UI e table. So these are the tools that you need to find here in the install and then install it and only after that import the flow. So this is the file lister node, this is the e table node, and everything else is standard. Okay, let's go back to customizing. Um, so that would be all about the default folders, uh, what you would do if you don't want to change folders, if you just want to stay in the, in the, in the default folder. Um, here I would come to the eTable node and I would go into the columns and most probably, I don't think you need to change any of these, what you would probably change is the output format of the change and the created table. So you can just move these, you know, year, month, day, uh, hour, minute, second, you can just move them around based on your local settings. And um, I don't think you need to change anything else here. No, these are quite generic. So you can just leave them as it is. I mean, to be honest, I think that would be pretty much all because, uh, I mean, of course you can play around with what file types that are getting uh, displayed or what previews you can have, but um, yeah, I mean, if you do that, you probably have to change the formatters as well, which gets a little bit more complicated, but uh, yeah, you can play around with this. So this is how the uh, how we handle the various files when they are clicked on, whether we should, you know, do this preview here. So this is what displays these text files that have a certain extension and the images that have a certain extension. I haven't implemented anything else, but that could be options for, I don't know, videos uh, or audio files. I'm not sure. I'm not really using any of those, so this is why I just uh, stick with some text files and image files. And um, here in the prep data, if you really want to play around with the icons, you can change 
as you can see I'm using the font awesome icons so you can play around with these if you really want to and you can see what um, um, extensions would um, result you know various icons so you know text and CSV uh, gets a text icon which is that's just like this one and all the images get the image icon which is looks like this and then I also have this file icon which is anything like uh, a JSON, a Pi or a CH so share script and the default is just the default file which is uh, like this one the log that's it probably the only other thing I would say is you might want to modify is the layout so um, I mean based on my screen and my monitor uh, I mean my monitor is full HD so it's not 4k so I'm using this uh, resolution so if you are using different fonts or uh, you have bigger screen and you want to make that sort of full screen you probably have to play around a little bit with the uh, with the widths because it is fixed at the moment so you can see that in the UI there are basically two groups the file browser group and the file preview group and they all have fixed width so if I go into the file browser I specify that to 18 width so if you want to make it smaller or bigger you can change here but if you do that also make sure that you are changing it here so that should be also 18 and also if you want to make it taller you can change the bit uh, sorry the uh, uh, you know times 10 as well if you make it any bigger or smaller you, this hidden one might actually come more to the left or actually jump under it and this is because all these buttons they have a fixed uh, width as well so if they add up to 18 then everything is going to be fine if they are going to be more than 18 then this hidden is probably going to jump down here and if it's less than 18 or you know whatever you set the the table to then it starts going back so probably the only thing you can do is you can modify the width of this one so it you know spaces the the hidden out and you can do it here that no that's the folder one so it's at the moment it's nine i mean you you can look up the size of the other buttons to figure out what number to set here in order to get because it's basically the refresh the reset the up and the hidden and the folder so these four need to add up to the same width as the file browser or less and similarly i did the same for the preview uh, which is in another group and this group is 10 wide and I specify the preview to 10 by 10 um, so it matches in height with the other group and here as well we have one button I think this is set to with two and this is three so this is probably five which again these three add up to ten and I can validate, yeah, the file name is five. Again, this is just how the, uh, the, um, uh, the dashboard arranges all these components in a group. So if you have a, a width of the group, and one, uh, as long as you specify the width for each component, like this text or the buttons, it will just put them next to each other, as long as you have space, and then it starts to wrap them around as there is no more space left so here um, the reason this whole big preview is not next to the download because there is you know this is the group is 10 with this is 10 with so this is definitely going to be on its own so that's how you can move around with the numbers but um, yeah so if you want to change the screen size and then of course the layout then uh, you can play around with this uh, or if you don't need one of the dates you need more of uh, space for the preview you can remove it from the columns and then you can just reuse this from 18 to let's say that would be probably like 14 and then you can give the extra four to the preview so the division between you know sort of this line is going to be here so you have almost half of your screen space for the preview but it looked a little bit better for me this way so I like it but 
I think that will be pretty much it. Um, it is very new. I think I started working on it yesterday or the day before yesterday, and uh, I finished it quite quickly. As, um, as soon as I managed to figure out how this works, then it was really easy because I could reuse probably 50% of the, of the previous flow. And um, I think it's working fine. As, soon as, um, as long as I was you know, clicking around, everything seems to work just fine. The download, the delete, and the general navigation and the preview. Um, if I missed anything, or if you think that there is like a really cool function that I haven't think about, and that should be, it would be a good idea to add, just let me know in the comment section. I'll, I will think about how I can do like a um, version 2.1 of this whole Fi browser function in Node Red. But I think that would be all for today. As I said, the links to this flow is going to be in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching, and hopefully see you in the next video.